Hi, it's Daniel with The Lack Factor. I would love to share with you today our last cruise on the MSC Maravilla. Uh, it was a three-night cruise. It left out of Port Canaveral, Florida, and went to Ocean K, their private island resort. Uh, it was a Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night cruise. So first of all, I'm gonna share with you uh, how the journey went. I'm gonna give you a room tour, talk about some issues that we had on the boat, also going to talk about how the dairy-free food options was. Um, to start out with, the first challenge that we had is we were actually coming on a red eye into Florida. We were coming off of another trip in Las Vegas. So we were arriving around 6 a.m. in Florida. Um, of course, MSC offers passage from Orlando Airport to the port, but they only did it at like 8 a.m. Our embarkation time wasn't until 4 in the afternoon. So I said, oh, scratch that. Then I looked into taxis, Ubers. I'm sure everybody does all this, trying to figure out how to get from Orlando Airport to the port. Um, all of that came in really wicked expensive. So the cheapest option I actually found was to rent a car, uh, a small car, Nissan Altima, 22 bucks per day for four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and then we parked at the cruise port which to park the whole time, they give you a one-time parking flat rate was 70 bucks. So to park and to rent the car was altogether about $220. So we got the car all parked, we come out of the garage, and surprise, surprise, all these horror stories that I've been hearing about the lines and people waiting hours to get into here, to get into the ship and to get on board. Sad to say, none of that happened for us. We literally went from the garage right onto the boat and it was pretty much amazing. So here we are, all the horror stories about the lines that I've seen online. We are here, it is 3.30. We just arrived, got the bags, parked the car. Let's see how we do. So before we get into the room tour, I gotta say the room was amazing. And I think I forgot to mention this. This is the first time we'd been on MSC in about eight years. Last time we was on, it was on MSC Divina and it was a five night cruise. So the room was kind of similar to that, uh, a little on the spacious side, the balcony was great. And first impressions of the room was very nice. Typical standard um, cabin. So here is our stateroom, 11139. Uh, just got uh, the attendant just said hello. <laughs> we walked in, uh, brought the luggage. Literally things are working smooth. Nice little bed here. Of course the towels program. And of course a balcony. What's life without a balcony? So, coming into the bathroom, here we are. Just need to check out the shower here. And I went ahead and just my the cover had been kind of moved away a little bit. So I just wanted to take a look at this down here in the floor. Look at how this looks. This is underneath the grate in the shower. 
I was really curious because there's this huge, huge odor. And clearly, I can tell why. So after discovering this really, really obnoxious smell coming out of the bathroom, I mean, it was so nauseating. Um, I went downstairs to the reception desk and informed them about what had happened. And uh, their answer was that the ship unfortunately was full. There were no other cabins that we could switch into. So I then just asked, could the room then be cleaned? And could that drain be cleaned out in the bathroom to stop the smell? Um, they told me that someone would handle it. And sadly, it was not handled. So on with the cruise. We got the, the room situation, it is what it is. Um, time to party, time to have some fun. I have to say the cruise was full of excitement. Lots of parties going on all the time. Um, it wasn't too loud that it bothered sleeping though. So for those that like to relax, it was it kind of, I don't know, at the end of the night, it didn't really feel it. But there was so much going on. I have to say my favorite part had to be when we got to the island. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, that was just amazing. The lighthouse party, dancing on the beach. I especially love the fact that the last time I cruised with them, they pulled into port and we were probably in port like 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., like most typical port stops. And, uh, and then you got to ship right out, go to the next place or go back to sea. It was really nice to actually show up 8 a.m., stay all day, park overnight until the next day at noontime. I was literally joking with some people. I'm like, I could sleep on the beach. And they said, yes, you could. Long as you're back on the ship by the next day at like 11.59 a.m. when they have to leave. So that was amazing. around the ship, um, whether we were walking, whether we were listening to music, dancing with the people, whether we were in the pools, there was, I was told it was like I, you know, when I asked about switching my room out, that the ship was uh, full. So it's just under 6,000 passengers, I believe. Uh, however, didn't always feel like that. Um, everywhere you went, there was obviously people, but it wasn't ever too cramped. I think it was nice enough, there was enough space, everybody was kind of doing different things. And I would say there was something for everybody, whether or not you're, you know, younger family, whether you're a little bit older, um, whether you're into just relaxing or you're into playing sports. Um, there was all kinds of cool stuff. There was so many different pools. There was basketball courts, there was arcades, um, all kinds of activities that would go on throughout the day. Uh, definitely something to keep you busy. Or in fact, if you wanted to do nothing, you could, which is what I did sometimes, just uh, sit and relax.
So having an incredible time enjoying the Ocean K Island. Uh, there is a couple of bars, uh, nice drinks to have. There was tons of space on the beach to relax and to chill out. Uh, definitely the 5,000 people on board did not come on the island right now. We are here all day so you can come off and on as many times as you want. It's nice you don't have to ride a tender boat. It is docked. Uh, however, we are going to go back on the ship now to get some lunch because unfortunately the lunch options here uh, just do not work for us. Let's take a quick look at what they have available for lunch. So it is just cheeseburgers, pasta salad, hot dogs, and french fries. And I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Swim around in this beautiful lagoon and the beautiful ocean and uh, worked up an appetite. Okay. All right, just walking across this beautiful bridge at Ocean K. Check this out, just amazing, amazing views. Nice and sunny day. Water is just incredible. Nice and clear. This is the lagoon right in here. Some jet skis coming through. Check this out, pretty cool. Plenty of trails, walkways, very nice for accessibility. Uh, there is beach wheelchairs as well as golf cart services that will ride you all around. Music all throughout the island, very clean, very well kept. When it comes to dining, we actually, uh, part of our room was booked under Aurea, A-U-R-E-A. -A. For those familiar, usually on MSC, when you do the booking, you get three different packages. Uh, you can choose from just keeping the normal base one that doesn't change in price much, but the Aurea actually came at a very good rate. It was only an extra $39, which was amazing. Um, and it provided with it uh, free access to like uh, some of the spa services, not massage, but you get like, you know, the steam room, the hot tubs, uh, all that stuff. But it also came with my choice dining, which to me was the best added benefit of being in this package. What it allowed was you didn't have to wait in the lines with the reserve time seating in the dining rooms. And the lines were rather large. When I was joking about not finding 6,000 people around, it seems like they all wanted to eat at the same time in the dining room. However, we would walk right by that line go and check in at a little kind of felt like a VIP desk. Say, uh, you know, give our card and we're here we're with My Choice Dining and brought right to the table. Never any waiting. And I literally could hear people in line. How do we get that? How do we sign up for that? Uh, totally recommended if the price is right for you. My Choice Dining. The only, you know, could be a downside to some people was that the part that we sat in the dining room was literally almost like VIP kind of empty. Um, the regular section of the whole dining room was like bustling the whole time with people. And we had, we were like waiting on hand and foot. There was at most when we were there, my choice dining, probably two or three tables that were occupied. Uh, but I loved it, totally great. <laughs> So 
In the dining room, I feel like this was the best place to get non-dairy love. Uh, we simply told the, uh, the host when we come in, we told um, the head waiter, and of course the assistant waiter, the head waiter was able to get the kitchen to basically go in and make us, uh, they took the daily menu that people would be presented with, and one of the chefs or someone who worked in the kitchen basically went through and crossed out everything that we couldn't have and wrote down things that they could modify for us as well to make it non-dairy. Um, and, and then after I asked the first night, they were able to go back through and do this the following two nights, which I thought was incredible without even being asked. Uh, right when we got there, they were ready. They had you know our options ready to go, which was very helpful. If I could give any critique about it, it would be that I was sad that there was not any good dessert, unfortunately, uh, just fruits. Did you do that? On to the buffet, because of course, um, dining, uh, sit-down service dining was not available for lunches. Um, you could come in breakfast time for sit-down dining, and it was only like I want to say an hour and a half. And I'm joking when I say this, but probably like six thirty to like eight, right? So if you were to really, you know, get up real early, you could have sit-down breakfast. If not, I, I feel like the majority of us uh, got up after 8, 9 o'clock. Um, it was just buffet for breakfast. So buffet for breakfast, buffet for lunch, and then sit down for dinner is typically how the days went. Um, the buffet was more hit or miss when it came to non-dairy. Obviously, there's some items that, you know, I can look at the pizza and say, gee, I see the cheese. I know there's cheese, right? But everything else, uh, it was not unfortunately clearly marked. They did have some labels that would simply say chicken on it. And, uh, you know, and while I'm very, very grateful there are labels that say chicken, and it was in several different languages, chicken, I wish the label would go steps further and say what also are the ingredients or what are the dietary needs of that dish. So instead, I would have to ask somebody who was very happy to help, by the way, they would then bring somebody out and I could ask them, does this have dairy in it? They would then have to go around, go back in the kitchen. About five minutes later, they'd come back. They would say, no, this doesn't, or yes, this does. Um, and then of course, it's a buffet, so there's so many options. I'd wanna know about something else, same process. They would have to go back in the kitchen, see if it had dairy, come back out and tell me. After about four or five items that I found I could eat, I would just give up because I'm not gonna continue to go on and on with the buffet. So I think the staff was really helpful. However, I don't think that they should have had to deal with that much craziness. I think it could be fixed with a better label. I just love touring through the buffet, checking out all the cheese that I can't eat. <laughs> I tell you though, it's always so clean. They have people cleaning like all day long. Tons of delicious breads. I don't know if these are just for sample. And there's my friend. Love that pork. Um, <laughs> they actually make that themselves. Love it. But anyway, it's very clean. People cleaning all day long. Uh, here's some chicken, fish, and cabbage. Of course, all uh, dairy-free. They were able to help us and get these options for us. And uh, going on to the wonderful labels. I, they take so much space just saying what it is, but sadly no ingredients. Really looking for them to list the ingredients here. It would be so much of a help. These small cups were a bit of an annoyance. <laughs> Had to put some scale up to it, but you can't get much. you got to go back up and take it again and again and again. But I tell you, sitting on the back of the ship, oh my goodness, what a great place to sit and and enjoy the water. Now, if you will allow me, I'd like to step on my soapbox for just a moment. Um, I know that people love going on cruises because of the food, and we love eating all of these foods. It's incredible. We can eat till we explode, and it's so nice to have all the food you can possibly have. My critique would be that anybody who goes on a cruise, you should just simply eat the food that you take from the buffet. I sadly, as I sat there and I, I kept going back and looking around and trying to find non-dairy foods, I saw so much food being wasted. Um, the staff was just incredible at cleaning things so efficiently because there's so many people always coming in and out. And again, the lines were not that long. You never really had to wait for a table. They'd be so great about cleaning, but 
you would see how much food was being wasted all the time. And uh, it just makes you sad. Now, of course, I know some people might say, well, gee, I don't know how the food is. Um, so I took it and then I couldn't eat it because I didn't like it. It was bad, so I had to throw it out. I get, I get that to a point, but I'm just talking about there was just way too much excess waste that for me just made me kind of sad to see. Now, of course, before I went on the ship, I did also find online because I, I literally scoured MSC's website for days trying to figure out how I can notify them of my non-dairy issues, um, you know, lactose intolerant. Um, and I, I tried calling. Uh, they weren't much help when I called, unfortunately. I did find this form online that I was able to fill out. And when I got on board, um, and by the way, the form just got submitted uh, like to an email address, but I never heard anything about it. Uh, but when I got online, they did actually receive the form. So this form is helpful. I would totally recommend using it uh, to help in the future. MSC for some crazy reason is really great at some things, but some things they're still a little behind on. And you'll see this when you go on a cruise with them, but you still have to print out um, actual paperwork when you go to uh, board. So when you bring your passport, you need the actual um, tickets printed from a home computer. You can't just show it on your phone, which is clunky, I think. Um, you also, when you come on board, you have to go to kiosks and, and load money onto your uh, room charge uh, card, either using a credit card or you could use cash. But again, with some other cruise lines, you just provide your credit card at the time of check-in and it's automatically linked and you don't have to do that. So. There's just some processes that are a little more uh, kind of antiquated than some other places. MSC has some uh, modernization to come up. Here's the form that I'm talking about off of the internet. Tell me what you think. I might be different in thinking so. Maybe there's a reason that they have this add-on service at the kiosks. Uh, please tell me in the comments if you agree with this or if you find it rather challenging. I. Like I said, I, I did only have to go there once, put my credit card in. Um, luckily, I didn't go over my, my limit, so I didn't have to go back again. But they did say the different cards have different limits. And there were some people who were going there like multiple times throughout the trip. Um, and it just, I found it to be rather an annoyance than helpful. But I'd love to know what you think about it. I am in love with this coffee maker. Closing thoughts. Did I have an incredible time on the ship? Absolutely, yes. Did I think that the entertainment was really incredible? No, I thought it was really good, but not incredible. It was just, uh, how would I describe it? Maybe not my exact taste of music, but it was still really fun. There was lots of seats, lots of availability. The dancing, the partying, all incredible. Um, the, the guests were very nice, very happy. Everybody seemed to be in good spirits. The weather was incredible. The staff were amazing. If I had the opportunity to go tomorrow, I'd be right on it. Go right again. Love MSC, love Ocean K. Um, like I said, last time I was there on Davina, several years ago, um, the island has developed a lot more. Really nice, you don't even need a tender boat. You just come right off the ship, right onto the island, uh, totally spaced out, did not feel like anybody was on top of me. You could be inside the lagoon part in the middle, or you could be on the ocean side. Incredible. Um, love the service, love the ship, love going around. Uh, I, I think overall, it was much more positive than negative. Had a great experience. I wish the sewer drain didn't smell like that, but at the end of all things, it's just a wish. I also wish the labels were better on the buffet and hopefully that will change in the future. But the food itself, the quality was good. Um, I didn't get sick eating the food. I didn't feel like I got a milk infection when I got home. So these are all really good things. Totally recommend it. They didn't pay me to say that and I would go on them again. Thanks for watching.